It's story time. Today I'm doing the case two of the Green Knight Terraforming Company. It's called Late Payment. And here we go. I strode into the Green Knight Terraforming Company, G GKTC, call center, even though I was the only human mammal in the entire cosmos who was allowed off planet and who was a troubleshooter extraordinaire. No one stopped their phone calls to stare at me. Ain't that a kick in the pads? The noise from different pitches and tones engulfed me and assaulted my ears. I was tempted to yell stop just to give my ears a rest. Instead, I looked around for an empty cube, set my coffee on the computer, and stuffed cotton balls in my ears because someone hadn't spent the extra expense for soundproofing. It reinforced my opinion that the call center was punishment instead of reward for good work. I glanced around at my co-workers. Just like any other call center, it smelled musty and musky from all the unwashed bodies whose sweat had soured from anger, disgust, and sometimes fear. Some of the musk was strange to human nose. Some of the voices were in a range that my human ears couldn't hear. It was the voices at the top of my range that made me want to scrape my fingers across an antique slate blackboard. The improvised earplugs helped a bit, but I was already getting a headache. Two cube rats were fighting and leaping over their cubicles to get their teeth into each other's ears and hands. One of the rats was trying to hand off a collar to the other. Donald had mentioned that sometimes in this very call center, the cubicle rats would bloody each other with teeth biting, knifing, and an occasional death. I looked away. Not my dog. Not my fight. I was the only earth human in this motley collection. When I had accepted a customer service rep job with the company, I had not read the fine print. Every ten years, I had to spend one to three months, depending on which moon the call center was rotating around, taking customer complaints and assigning complaint teams. My butt was already sore and I hadn't sat down yet. A gong went off in my cubicle. I reached for my cup of black coffee and took a bite out of a white sugar donut. I answered the communication terminal with the hand that held the donut. What? I answered. I left a white sugar smear on the answer button. A face appeared on the terminal. We used some really old communication equipment with an actual CRT monitor. Because the cost of holographic technology outside the lab was astronomical. Talk about ancient equipment. My grandfather used to draw on about aligning a CRT. Plus, I was pretty sure the face on the call would have given me heart palpitations if I had seen her hologram. Why are you wearing that? The face, a call center goddess and guru, had alabaster skin, blue eyes, and black hair worn in a knot on the top of her head and dressed in a tailored jacket and skirt that has been a woman's business armor for centuries. I, on the other hand, wore my most stained work uniform, khaki pants with dark spots, probably coffee, white polo shirt with blood and food stains, and scuffed steel-toed boots. I was proud of my shit-kicking outfit. Miss Frigg, I said. My mind was scrabbling for a way to, to defuse the situation. Since I couldn't come up with anything, I decided to explode it instead. You know, this is the complaint department, and I want the customers to know that I'm serious about their complaints. Joe, she pursed her lips like she had taken a bite of lemon. You will only use audio today and no visual. Tomorrow you will show up in my office early so I can inspect your uniform. That is all. She hung up. Well, part one of my plan to get fired was well on its way. Tomorrow I would start part two. If I annoyed her enough, she would throw me out and put me back into the complaint department. There was a lot more action and resolution, and I could wear my shit-kicking boots, because I sure do love adjusting the customer's attitudes. I sipped the coffee, finished eating my donut, and picked up the next customer in queue. I didn't turn off the visuals. So, 
I am a sane person. Really, I am. And like any sane person, I don't like to stand in front of the boss getting yelled at. I swear there's a greater purpose to my actions. If I annoy the management, in this case, Miss Frigg, I could go back to what I was good at, kicking butt and taking names. In other words, customer complaint resolution. When Miss Frigg finished her tirade, she looks so cute when she's angry. I st stopped my lips from twitching and handed her a donut. It was covered in a powdered sugar and was creamy in the inside. I knew that it tasted gooey, sugary, and calorie rich because I had sampled the other donut before entering her office. A powdered creamy donut had a divine smell that promised gooey goodness. My hands were still sticky and I had powdered sugar all over my uniform. It was the same uniform I had worn yesterday. I raised an eyebrow when Miss Frigg graciously accepted the donut and took a huge bite out of it. She must have had some cleaning nanobites in her business suit because the call center goddess didn't get a speck of powdered sugar on her blouse. If I didn't know better, I would have thought that she wore the same suit as yesterday. For all I knew, she had a closet full of those suits in the same cut and color. In the back of my mind, I admired her long fingers and tried to peek down her blouse futile effort. But she was the first human that I had seen since I left home to work for the company. Miss Frigg sighed. You know you're not getting out of the call center this time. You and your team are getting six months for your creative efforts to avoid the call center. She took another bite, licked her lips, moaned a little, and then mumbled for my everlasting sins. To get me in her call center, she must have murdered an important client. This time, the twitch in my lips got out of control. I smiled. Miss Frigg finished the donut, wiped her hands with a wet cloth, and went back to her monitor. I was guessing to study the report on my latest shenanigans. Since my earworm was on vacation and Dan Donald was in the call center at another desk, I didn't have anyone who could read Miss Frigg's thoughts for me. Donald had warned me that the last person who tried to read her mind had ended up on a world that smelled like sulfur. The offender was a mere mention of himself when he finished that contract because he vomited daily. Miss Frigg didn't tell me to leave, but I knew I was dismissed when she didn't lift her eyes from her monitor. Okay, one for me and one for Miss Frigg. She was going to be a hard nut to crack. Oh, what the hell. I looked under the desk to see what her legs were like. Long and smooth. I think I drooled. She looked up from the monitor and glared. I grabbed the doorknob and was out the door as fast as I could move. Okay, two for her and one for me. If I didn't know that Miss Frigg's office was lined with the best telepathic bro blocker that money could buy, I would have thought that Donald had heard the entire conversation. Everyone except me was a telepath. I could sometimes receive if Donald or one of the lab rats gave me a focused beam of thought, but I was telepathically blind. Still, I got a jolt of paranoia when Donald grinned at me as I strode to my cube. The communication terminal buttons in Donald's cube had turned red with incoming calls of complaining customers. Donald's nose, beak, and whatever wrinkled as he smelled the sugary sweetness on my uniform. You didn't bring me one? I knew he was sarking at me. Donald didn't eat anything sweet. He claimed he was allergic to sugar. Gave it to the call center goddess, I said, and if you're asking, nope, it didn't help. We have six months on the desk. Donald frowned then. Six months was three times longer than most teams got during their contracts. I continued, apparently we've been skipping our duties and the other teams are complaining. Okay, the call go center goddess hadn't said those words, but I was smart enough to parse her meaning. I didn't have the language smarts of the earworms, but Miss Frigg was human. I could get the basics. Unfortunately, six months of Miss Frigg's call center equaled two years. My evasive skills had penalized us. I didn't tell Donald why. He was a smart enough duck to guess. Donald had one of those personal names that a human throat just couldn't pronounce. I called him Donald because of his waddle and how he liked to wear bright yellow shirts. He came from a heavy gravity planet, which is why he was built like a tank. 
When we were on customer complaints, he's the one you wanted on your team when the shit hit the fan. A technical term all techno geeks understand. He could handle most types of weaponry, plus he was telepathic. He called me tiny. Actually, Earth humans were the only species who hadn't de developed telepathy in the Cosmo crowd. Very few Earthlings left the home planet. We were the troubleshooters, the thinkers, and were able to switch from peaceful to aggressive solutions at a moment's notice. Most of the Cosmo crowd didn't have that ability. They were either peaceful or aggressive, according to their genetics. Because we were able to transform so quickly, the Cosmo crowd was just a little wary of us. If we got off our planet in a big way, it was a good odds that we would be in charge of the Interplanetary Council in less than a century of Earth time. So the leaders and business corporations used us carefully and kept us on leashes. I suspect that this call center grounding was another leash. Someone either wanted revenge or wanted me and my team out of the way. Donald grunted his agreement. Donald was a member of my team, so I couldn't keep him out, but he had taught me the basics of keeping other telepaths out of my head. It was much harder to keep my emotions under control, so I leaked to empaths. There were fewer of them in the Cosmo. Donald looked thoughtful and then went back to the calls. When we had a chance for a recon, we'd take it. Someone, or a bunch of someones, wanted us out of the way. It's not paranoia if someone is really out to get you. <clears throat> In the first hour, we handled hundreds of calls. Just shoot me now. The company had just introduced a personal terraforming package for hundreds of lower-income families. You could get a backyard, one-acre, ten-acre, or hundred-acre packages to terraform and design your personal space. Some of the Cosmo crowd were comfortable in Forest and Glen, while others were more comfortable in the desert. With the new packages, you could have a planet with several types of terraforming. No single climate on planets and asteroids. That was the old days. Nowadays, with these new packages, we had tons of complaints from customers who didn't know the difference between a power source and a power cord. I was wishing for the old days when terraforming was only sold to corporations or geeks. A high squeaky voice was complaining that his backyard was not changing to the desired setting. I ignored the setting problem because it wasn't the setting that was causing the problem. It was the customer. Sir, did you plug it into your power? I asked as patiently as I could. I stretched my right leg because the customer was cramping my brain, which cramped my leg. It might not make sense to you, but I only had enough brain power to deal with the customer. I thought the power came with the product, was the answer. There was a tremor in this squeaky voice. No, I said, batteries are not included. What? This time the customer was confused. I had my visuals on, but the customer had turned his off, probably so that I wouldn't get clues about a species. I guessed rodent family, and I called him ratty in my head. I imagined his nose whiskers wiggling from agitation. I repeated the answer so that he could understand. If you read the fine print, you must supply your own power. Even a small terraforming package used a lot of power. Energy wasn't cheap. There was quiet on the other end of the line, and, the, and then the customer said, I don't have the power. Is there any way I can return the package and get my credits back? I started to spill that I was sending him to our finance department. Of course, I couldn't make that call. Finance had the sole power to say yay or nay. I connected his call to finance. We had a lot of calls like that one. Someone who had come up with the packages hadn't thought past about, hadn't thought past the, wow, this is a cool stage. Most of the norm's technical skills were zilch, as in none. This particular customer had been fairly nice but clueless. clueless. There were some customers that threatened bodily harm to me, my family, and my friends. I felt pretty safe from that one because I did, he didn't seem to know how to walk, let alone pilot a spacecraft and find me. I knew Donald had had enough of the same calls when he got his latest complaint. When he gave his latest complainer his home address with pictures and arrows, he added, please bring something fun to play with. I groaned. When Donald told someone to bring something to, fun to play with, it could 
only be dangerous or demolishing. Plus, since Donald and I were a team, I would get to play. I could feel my joints tighten up at the thought. The last time we ended up spending a little quiet time in a small room next to the police. They called themselves something else, Planetary Peace Force. They were still enforcing laws to keep the troublemakers safe. Besides, why would folks go to looking for trouble if trouble was well-armed and prepared to use it? Idiots, I muttered under my breath. Miss Frigg called Donald into the office, and he was less exuberant about dealing with the customers after that. So yes, the company was spying on the call center. Whoop-de-doo. By the end of the day, it felt like a week. Fun, eh, Donald? Donald just snorted and then promised mayhem. This is the end of part one. Part two will be in the next video.